We all know how important memory speeds are for Ryzen CPUs, especially the last three generations. But what about Ryzen 5000? After all, this is the latest release from AMD, and despite still being seven nanometer, these have been reworked from the ground up. And it clearly shows the performance gains over last gen are seriously impressive, making these an easy recommendation across the board. Something else that's really interesting is the faster Infinity Fabric clock that can be pushed a little bit faster this time around. So can Ryzen 5000 really benefit from faster DDR4 memory? And what does that mean for an ultra high speed kit like this 4000 megahertz CL15 from G-Skill? Well, let's take a look. Now the memory kit that I've used across all CPU reviews for quite a while now has been this kit right here, 32 gigabytes, 3200 megahertz with pretty low latencies. So if you are new to PC building, just note that the latencies of the kit are just as important as the frequency itself. And sure, I could have used a 4000 megahertz kit to compare the 5900X and 10900K to begin with, but what happens when I need to test the Ryzen 5 2600 or a 3300X? Good luck pairing those CPUs with a really high speed kit like this. Motherboard choice is equally as important and although high speed RAM compatibility has improved along with the generations of Ryzen processors, it's definitely something that you'll still need to check with a super high speed kit. I'm using the X570 creation from MSI which I found to be one of the more reliable and predictable AM4 boards to test with and this handled the 4000 megahertz kit without a struggle. But to actually get our Ryzen CPU to run properly with a memory kit faster than 3600 megahertz, we need to overclock the Infinity Fabric. As an oversimplified explanation, this is the high speed link between the major components of a Ryzen CPU, and by default, it's synced directly to your memory speed. So for example, if you have a dual channel 3200 megahertz memory kit, your Infinity Fabric speed, also known as F-Clock, will be 1600 megahertz. What's new with Ryzen 5000 CPUs is that they have an F-Clock that can be pushed up to 2000 megahertz, which now allows us to run a super fast 4000 megahertz memory kit. But is that actually worth it? Well, let's take a look at a very broad comparison to start with. Extremely slow DDR4-2133 megahertz versus reasonably fast 3200 megahertz versus the ultra fast 4000 megahertz CL15 kit. Firstly, in Cinebench R20, there's barely a difference at all. We're looking at a difference of just 15 or so points between the 2133 megahertz versus 4000 megahertz kit. That changes when we look at V-Ray though. We can improve our score by a little under 4% by jumping from 2133 to 3200, but then only 0.5% from upgrading from 3200 to 4000. The speed up when it comes to gaming is much of the same story there's a noticeable performance improvement between 2133 and 3200, but the 4000 megahertz kit, despite in theory giving us a huge boost, doesn't. Between the 3200 megahertz CL14 kit that I use for testing and the 4000 megahertz CL15 kit, you're looking at at most a 1% improvement in frame rate. But there's a little more that's going on behind the scenes here because the profile loaded by this board, whether it's correct or not, can be improved on. Specifically, the memory timings and sub timings, which can be tightened up significantly. For example, lowering the TRFC value from 700 down to 260, this alone provided more benefit from the jump in frequency alone from 3200 to 4000. Although we are still talking about performance gains of barely 1%. And by tightening up a few more timings, dropping TRAS from 36 to 34 and TRC from 90 to 50, we get potentially another 1% depending on the game or application. At this point though, there really is such minimal benefit for the amount of time invested. And don't forget that every time you tweak or change one of these settings, you're introducing potential instability to your system. I think we'd all agree that it's just not worth your games crashing for that extra one FPS. So Ryzen 5000 CPUs don't seem to be any more memory speed sensitive than previous Ryzen generations. And you can probably get most of your performance gains out of a 32 200 or 3600 megahertz kit. And the fact that you can now push the fabric clock up to 2000 megahertz is 
pretty cool from a CPU testing and benchmarking point of view, but in no way, shape or form does it provide a meaningful benefit in terms of performance in games or mainstream applications. So it's absolutely not worth it. The price of this kit is $220 US, whereas the price of a 3600 MHz CL16 kit is less than half that and will get you 99% of the way there. At the end of the day, it does all come down to price and the good news is that pricing is definitely in your favor at the moment. The price difference between a bottom of the barrel 2133 MHz kit versus the aforementioned 3600 kit is only around $40 US and that is absolutely money well spent. So that's the recommendation, stick to a decent value 3200 to 3600 MHz kit with decent timings, just as you would with previous Ryzen generations. If you've really got some time to kill, feel free to jump in the BIOS and tighten up some of those timings but keep in mind that that's mostly going to be beneficial on slower kits since they have more headroom for improvement and you are potentially introducing instability to your system. So I'll leave some links down below to some memory kits that you might be interested in. As always, a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.